What's going on everybody? Stone Long here, Toronto, Canada, and in this video I want to talk about a little bit of my experience and relationship with the Church of the Universe. I put my church hat on today because I thought I should share some information and uh, pay my respects to Reverend Brother Walter Tucker, who passed away a couple months back. Uh, he was 79 or 80 years old as far as I know. I joined the Church of the Universe when I was 18 years old. I joined it in, uh, when I just turned 18 in June 2006. Uh, I became a minister shortly after there, an ordained minister, because I felt the calling. And uh, that was the only place I felt love besides my immediate family in the world and anyone who's been to the G13 Mission of God knows that it was uh, the most genuine, honest, loving place in the existence of the world, as far as I know. It was really a magical place. And unless you were there to experience a love, I don't think you can ever understand or fully appreciate how beautiful that was. And that's what's so frustrating um, when you think the, how, how the police took it away. Uh, I won't lie, we did provoke the police because we were righteous, maybe in a, a destructive way. We were influenced by the brothers who started the church and they're pretty hardcore with their ways. Um, but yeah, I wanted to pay my respects to Brother Walter Tucker because personally myself, uh, I don't identify with being a member of the Church of the Universe anymore. Although maybe I'll always be one. I, I'm a little cold right now, it's cold. <laughs> but, uh, I do identify with being a minister of God still. And, uh, the last time I talked to him, Brother M Michael Bald Zero, I honestly told him to fuck off and grow up. Because uh, I was questioning Canvas as a sacrament. And I posted in the Church of the Universe group. And he uh, deleted it. And I was like, yo, this reminds me of like some regular religion bullshit. Like maybe I take things too personally, but that was my thoughts. Because I, I found it was like, if you believe in Jesus Christ as a savior in the Roman Catholic Church. But then you question and say, maybe Jesus is just a prophet. And the Pope doesn't like that and ex excommunicates you. That's kind of how it felt to me. Now, I take things personal sometimes, but uh, I was emotional at that period of my life. And, like, I didn't appreciate that. But no hard feelings. And uh, the memories I have of uh, being with the Church of the are amazing. It was a big part of my life from 18 to 23. I was always the fire starter in the church. I always wanted to bring people together. You know, I'd do anything for the church. And, uh, I didn't, I have, I never got proper footage. I got audio. I recorded, like, a couple hours of audio sitting down with the brothers when I met them for the first time at, in the Hamilton Mission. I never got the footage I wanted to get with Walter Tucker, Brother Walter Tucker, which is shitty. Because, uh, he was a man of God. No one's perfect, and the brothers aren't perfect. But I'm not perfect either. But they have, their, they have their foot in the door. And they planted a seed. What happens with that seed. If it grows and it continues. Is up to everybody else. But I did. Feel the love. Uh, from brother Walter. Even though they're in a different generation. And have different views sometimes. He uh, spoke the message of God. And Jesus Christ. And uh, it was really intelligent. His, his father was a, a judge and a leader of the Liberal Party in Saskatchewan, as far as I know. And uh, Walter Tucker had a serious life. He started the church in 1969. And uh, at Clear Art Water Abbey. And, and originally it was uh, a party ground for bikers and everybody welcome, you know, to smoke cannabis. And uh, so the story goes, what he told me is one brother was preaching about God in the, in the water. Because it was like a nudist colony, he was preaching about God in the water on canvas. And uh, he, he said that basically he started to perceive and believe along the lines that this brother was preaching. And he said that that's when he became a Christian. So people have their, their feelings about the brothers, you know, they're... In Hamilton and in, in Canada, they're they're a figure 
um, something that's at least amusing. And it's always nice when uh, somebody is so hardcore in their cannabis beliefs that they stand by it for life. But as Sister Angel was saying, uh, the young shouldn't fight the cause. And that's what we were doing at G13. I was like 18 years old. I was in, you know, a gun was put to my head and I you know, went to jail in handcuffs. And uh, was on charges for two years. I was harassed by the police. Came to my house over 15 times in a year under the Tavis program, which was... Toronto Anti-Violence Intervention Strategy. I was charged on a non-criminal offense. So I spoke of mine to them. I wrote several letters to the, uh, the chief of police and the mayor. And, you know, I was serious in my beliefs. I remember when I got out of jail, uh, my parents bailed me out, luckily, or else I would have been going to the dawn with everyone else for the next couple days. And, uh, I remember I was with Brother Zeno in the booth and stuff, and his sister was there. <laughs> and he said something funny, like, which is I'll just keep to myself because there's no reason to say it, but I love Zeno, he's a cool guy. And Josh, as everybody knows, Shrews, Moose, Dan, Brother Peter, Jamie, Susie, Debbie, and all the campus family. And, uh,. We stuck together for a long time, and, and I'm still in contact. I'm still in contact with Josh, since you know, and uh, it's honestly a, a loving cannabis family. And whether cannabis is spiritual, um, for some people is up in the air, but spiritual people use cannabis, let's say. And uh, it's just amazing, and. It took, it's taken me like six years to even start making videos about my feelings about this because I don't know why. I just, uh, it's a big part of my life and it was an emotional ride. I remember when I got out of jail, I looked in uh, the paper and there was Peter on the front cover. Uh, as far as I know, we're the, the second page in, in handcuffs. And uh, it's just sad because we were great people. We are great people. We just feed the homeless. Uh, we used to feed the congregation. Uh, we didn't charge money for the food that basically was provided. And we used the donations from the cannabis to, yes, get more cannabis because it, it costs money to get cannabis in this day and age. But we also gave back to the church and the members of the congregation. And uh, it was the, it's the true definition of a church. And uh, I was never religious until 17 or 18 when I realized cannabis is sacrament, God is God. And it just made sense to me because I've been using cannabis unconsciously as a medicinal sacrament for several years before that. Back to the part where I got out of jail, my parents picked me up, and uh, I got a lot of stuff to say about the experience. I'm going to break it down in, in several videos. Like, I think I just think it's time to rage to release this stuff. Because some of the police didn't even want to raid us that night. And, you know, I just remember looking at police pointing a gun at my head and just realizing, like, what the fuck is this, man? Like, are you serious? Like, it was all a show. They wanted to show the neighborhood they were kicking ass. Because we had beef with uh, city council or Sandra Bussin. Fuck a Bussin. And uh, Corella DeVille and shit. And uh, she was standing there with her arms crossed in front of the church. Just around election time, you know. So they used us. Strategic moves by the Toronto Police and Mayor David Miller. I'm pretty sure he was mayor at that point. But anyways, uh, when I got home... I went down to my room and I just broke down and cried on the bed and it, I never I never thought it, lying down on your bed would still feel so fucking good. I remember I just broke down and started crying and my dad came and just sat with me and just patted my back and stuff but I, in the summertime you gotta understand I was going to bed at 10.30 at night I was waking up in the morning I was being productive I wasn't getting in trouble in the streets I felt I was doing something great and I got arrested for it and thrown in jail. And uh, it's an emotional roller coaster, and uh, I'll continue it on. Uh, this is the end of the video. Blessings, 13 blessings.